What's up, everybody? Shimok here. Today, we're taking a look at the 9.3 update notes for Smite. Are you guys ready to be disappointed? Let's get into it. So, here's some of the skins. Some really, really great skins, to be fair. These are these are some awesome skins. I love that Shiva one. Uh, the Anubis one's pretty cool. Rambo. It wasn't Paladins. Now it's here. I like that Merlin one, too. Um, love the Scotty one. I know it's just like a little recolor event one, but yeah, I like that one. Um, so, let's get into the actual changes. Pop, pop, pop. Oh my god, there's a lot. There's a bunch of bug fixes and stuff, so that's nice. So, okay, here's a cool one. Conquest Towers. Increased base damage dealt to enemy gods. Whoa, and the damage dealt to minions is unchanged? Whoa. So, here's a... Yeah, this is a fun little change. I don't really know how I feel about it. So, I guess it's like to... Um, help ward off uh, tower dies and stuff like that. And, you know, make a... Uh, I guess this this would also affect um, you know all the way throughout the game, so lessen the effect of people just walking under tower while they have fire giant to get to, to get towers. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a full on band aid to some of the issues of uh, tanks just being too tanky, um, some of the warrior junglers being able to just dive under tower and stuff like that. I get that, but I don't know. Hmm. I feel like there are better ways to try and balance away uh tower dives but I, I, I guess you know buffing the tower damage itself against only gods that's that's one way to do it so we can see how that feels but it 10 percent does feel like it could be a lot and it's just like well okay so tower diving getting tower dove is annoying but i mean it should still be a thing you know it shouldn't be illegal to tower dive somebody so if this makes it feel like oh i'm going to jail every time i tower dive somebody um like, I'm guaranteed going to kill myself every every time I tower dive somebody. Um, that's a little lame. I don't, I don't necessarily like that. But, alright, so the obelisk, they're changing this. A lot of people really don't like the obelisk. Um, I think it's a really neat idea, but uh, it does feel a little loaded. Uh, I think I mentioned that it should either give Indra Scepter or the Golden XP, and not both. Because that just makes it too loaded, because it... Uh, Makes it control too much of the game. Um, so decrease the sight radius that the obelisk provides from 30, 30 units to 20 units. Uh, increase the amount of time it takes to steal an offering. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So you couldn't really walk in other people's jungle on, on that particular side of the map without being revealed, basically. Because you had to walk past the, the obelisk. So I guess this gives you... Uh, I guess it isn't even really clear to you where it can see. But... Whatever. So I, I feel like it, you shouldn't even be able to see it. You know, you should. It should be something you have to read, like a, like a buff, right? Like you have to read when someone's in your jungle and trying to take your buff. You know, I feel like it should be the, the same thing here, and it shouldn't give you any sight at all around it. Um, but okay, increase the amount of time it takes to steal an offering from three seconds to four seconds. Yeah, that was happening a little bit too often, I guess. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's a way where, like, if you steal an offering, it doesn't give you the full golden XP. I don't know. Okay, Nagas, these no longer provide team gold. I actually didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't even realize they did that. Um, so that's that was a little silly. And then fixed an issue where these monsters' level scaling was not capping appropriately. I actually never felt that. I felt like they were always, well, maybe they were getting a little too tanky because I did feel like they were a little too tanky around mid to late. But, um, yeah, so then these will now be marked on the minimap and will have proper visual effects to convey that they drop offerings. Okay, I mean, I feel like I feel like it was pretty clear anyways. That's a little un unnecessary, but that's fine. So, then, uh, Amulet of Silence. Um, oh, right, right. Each player can, can now only buy one glyph total. Absolutely necessary. 155,000%. Um, no doubt whatsoever in my mind that that's the correct decision, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it was mostly a tank issue, really. Like, they were buying, a one damage oriented glyph or like double defense oriented glyphs like the um the amulet one as well as the breastplate glyph uh together was just way too strong so that's fair that's definitely a fair change um so amulet assigns this item will now only trigger and consume the cooldown if it successfully applies to an enemy god i hate this item with like a burning passion but that does make sense i mean fair is fair right it's not like um like uh you tank phoenixes are magic right or are they physical Okay, let's say like a magical NPC hits you in Smite while you have Ansile and it triggers it, right? Like that, that just feels stupid. It just doesn't feel 
you know, like like if like if a Nox pokes you with her with her uh, one or something and it triggers your answer, okay, fair is fair. But like if a random NPC triggers it, it's like okay, well, thanks. So uh, I think that's only fair. As much as I hate that item, uh, Thorns of Overgrowth. I actually forget um, what this one does because I just haven't seen Thorns anywhere, frankly. But um, okay, they're increasing the radius of the bonus boss from 40 to, 40 to 55 units, which increases the chances of 50. Oh man. Okay, well, to be fair, I really should have looked this up. I actually forget what this one does. Hold on. Ah, additionally, you gain a stack of 5% movement speed and attack speed for all enemy units within a 40-unit radius. So they're upping the rate. Okay, I see. Yeah, no one's going to buy this. Moving on. And then with Thorns of, of Sapping Strength, they have just a, a increase of duration, which, of course, uh, affects, it, affects the passive of this because it... Uh, Reduces the cooldown every time it gets triggered. So, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So, you get more uh, more triggers of this. So, okay. Cool buff. Cool buff. Bracer of Illumination, which I really want to be... I actually completely forgot about this. I do want this to be good. This is like the uh, Wisps that Callista has in League of Legends. Um, so, decreasing the cooldown down, down to 90 seconds. That That's a lot better. That's more like what, what you want for uh, for something like this. that costs money but lets you place wards. I think that's, that's more fair. Increase the range of the patrolling board from 60 to 80. That's a pretty decent amount extra. That's another... Uh, third of what it was already doing um and increase the speed by 15 percent of its current speed speed i think is actually really important for something like this um and of course they're they're pretty much increasing the speed by how much they added to it um not not a full third but you know they're, they're increasing the speed because it's covering more ground as well so i feel like this could this could have gone up even further but since it's covering more ground you want it to be faster um but you wanted it to be faster anyways i feel so um, I, I just, I just haven't really played with it that much. So, you know, I can't really give too much of a, too many of my thoughts about it, but I guess that's kind of the problem is that it just wasn't even good enough that nobody was trying this thing out. Um, even in my trash, trash games. Um, but Berserker's Shield is getting reworked. Ugh. I'm just not, I'm not excited for this boys. So what's going on here? 2,400 gold. Um, and then 30 power. 60 physical protections, 25 attack speed, 25% attack speed. Um, it's from HP5, I don't know why. Uh, passive, if you drop below 40% health, you you become berserk for 5 seconds. Berserk provides damage mitigation. Why are they giving this damage mitigation, bro? Can only occur once every 15 seconds like the current one, and can now be built by all physical gods. Oh, sorry, it's passed out. I was thinking about hunters building this. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's not good in, in its current form, but I feel like if it's not good in its current form, they're going to overbuff it, and then hunters are going to buy it, and they're going to have hunters with defense items again. I just don't... I so don't want that to, to happen. I don't understand can now be built by all, by all physical gods. Why do they want... Why do they want an item with 60 physical protections that a hunter can buy? Like, did you guys not play Smite? What was the, um... What was the season where they did this most? I think it was six season six or something where they where they uh were building berserker shield and stuff the original berserker shield that worked off of auto attacks i mean that was so annoying and then the it was pretty short-lived but the shifter shield hunters like dude like you don't want this i don't know why it can now be built in all physical gods why like this item's already a problem on um mostly warriors but some assassins too uh and then they're just like, okay, let's spread the problem over to hunters as well, where like you can't kill them, but they can very easily kill you. I don't, I don't see it. And like the damage mitigation is, I mean, seven percent. Okay, that's not a lot. That is not a lot of damage mitigation. But um, yeah, I still don't like. This is just gonna, this, this, that's gonna feel really unfair when it's on a tank, and then it might cheat you out of some kills if it's on like a hunter or something. Not necessarily saying this will be great for any hunters right now. Because, I mean, that really is not a lot of power. But that is a decent amount of attack speed, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it'll be great for Hunters right now. Especially considering that they got rid of the um, Protection Shred. That's on it right now. But, uh, yeah, I'm just not excited. Not excited at all for that. That should not be a thing, okay? Just don't... Can I be built off? No. Don't do that. So, yeah, they're just clarifying how Aussie works. Uh, it doesn't work like Berserker Shield... It, it does its own thing. It triggers every 15 seconds if you're at the uh, low health. So, yeah. If you're within the health threshold. Sorry. Should be, should be speaking professionally. So, uh, and then Blackthorn Hammer increased the physical power from 25 to 30. Yeah, they didn't want to overbuff it. I get it. Uh, item's trash, though. So, you know, moving on. 
A uh, spiked shield. This is interesting. They're touching this item. I think that's only fair. I mean, this this is like the worst tier two because it barely it barely does anything. It costs sixteen hundred. So yeah, but I mean, void shield. Eh. Void shield's a problem still, anyways. So uh, you don't want to overbuff void shield or anything. But okay, I mean, if you want to go into void shield, fair enough. Yeah, make this a little bit cheaper. Uh, glad shield increasing the health on glad shield. So glad shield I actually tried it out a little bit on um, Kukoan and King Arthur, as well as Sasano, but we, we don't talk about that. Um, and it's, it's pretty fun. I mean, it, it doesn't feel terrible, but uh, yeah, there are definitely better options. But Glad Shield's stats are actually really nasty. Um, when I was taking a closer look at it, it's like the, the health, the cooldown reduction, the protections, the little bit of power, and the passive as well. Um, it's really not bad, all things considered. Um, but yeah, don't think it's going to be meta because they added 50 health, but still. I think it's actually better than people give it credit for. It just depends on the god. Definitely depends on the god. Some gods just can't use it. No, don't use it. Um, Leather Cowl, interestingly enough, seeing a physical power increase to 20. So, yeah, this is one of the issues. Um, of course, again, not going to get fully into it now. But it just feels like the power creep issues are getting worse in Smite. So instead of bringing Death Toll back down, they're bringing Leather Cowl. It's former... Um, better, I guess. Like, um, Leather Cowl was its, was its better at the... Uh, at the start of season eight um it was for most of season eight so instead of bringing death toll back down they're bringing leather cowl up to its level uh in terms of power so now it gives 20 power um so i guess now in this sense they could be considered rivals i mean maybe on some characters leather, leather cowl will be better they obviously don't want to overbuff this um and um the, the leather cowl upgrades are still decent so you know uh i, I could see leather cowl being good on a few characters, uh, it was it, the big one is just really like how are you going to deny the extra power that Death Soul gives you? Like Leather Cowl does not give you that much more sustain, um, so I mean it was just, it was just like a no brainer. So now they're bringing this back up. So I guess I guess we'll see what happens. I still think Death Soul is going to be better on a few characters at at the very least, um, and Leather Cowl could overtake it as the majority. So. Uh, then skin size getting buffed. This is like it's not the same impact as the um, pen flat pen mage items getting buffed, but this is just one of those ones where it's like, oh, come on, oh, why, huh? Why? It's it's already getting picked up and stuff. What, huh? What? Why? I, so they're saying it's because they want us to be able to sh more easily shred through warriors. Uh, okay, uh, but like hunters already feel pretty decent. It's just that warriors are just so incredibly over bloated uh at the moment anyways and you know they, they said they're going to touch on it um there isn't too much here yet that's talking about warriors they said they were bringing down warriors a bag but it's like they reworked berserker shield and they're like well okay now now you're going to be able to kill them because we changed berserker shield so now you're going to be able to kill them while, while the breastplate glyph and the heartward glyph they're still right there and like bulwarks right there as well uh and spectral you know, like all these crazy defense items are still right there on the table. And then they're just like, well, see, we, we made a kid size 100 gold less. So, haha, <laughs> big thumbs up, um, which was already a really, really solid item. Like, it's a, this is already a really good item. So why don't you just uh, change something about the warriors to make them less uh, less potent and not bring this down? They're going to bring this down. And then next patch is going to be like, okay, we didn't we didn't nerf warriors enough, guys. And then they're going to nerf the warrior items. And now King's kin size is going to be OP. So. That's how I feel about it, because of the 100 gold. But yeah, obviously, obviously not a huge buff, but you, I think you guys get what I mean. Jotun's Frosty, I, I don't know why it was 60 seconds. I think this is just like, this isn't like um, a really good buff. This is just, this just makes sense, you know? Like it should have been 30 seconds anyways. I don't know why it was 60. Like it, it, it's honestly pretty hard to get to max stacks on this. And even when you get to max stacks, the uh, damage increase doesn't feel that great. And to be honest, once, you, once you're close to max stacks, they're usually almost dead anyways, and they would have been almost dead even if you um, didn't upgrade Jotun's Wrath at all. So, eh. It needs its, um, its numbers adjusted, but I, f I don't want this item to be good because, uh, yeah, hunters and assassins are going to go wild with it. If it's, like, percent damage increase, it just goes goes haywire. They, like, double the amount of damage, extra damage it does. It can be it can be a big problem. I don't, I don't want that item to be good, so. Katana, they're changing... I don't know why they're doing this. So, decrease the cost. So, I guess, like, they want us to maybe start with it because it's 600. But now we're just going to start with the mace still, sir. 
Uh, so decrease the cost on the tier one, decrease the cost. Like, why? I don't know. Could someone. I guess if someone could, like, explain what the theory is here. Like, I cost. I cost. I read these, but, um. I don't get it. I guess it's because, like, the assassins that buy these items aren't too great right now. So they want to help them out. I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it at all. Jane has uh, buffing Jane Emperors again, bro. I hate this item. It's so stupid. It just reduces your damage, and there's nothing you can do about it whatsoever. Um, and, you know, I, I guess I get that uh, about things like Void Stone uh, and things like um, Void, Void Shield as well. You know, like per percent debuffs, right? Aura debuffs. It can feel pretty overwhelming. And, yeah, I don't like those either. But this one especially just feels... Awful! It feels so bad to fight into this stupid item. It feels like you do... Uh, uh, because, like, you, you... For me, anyways. I play the situations out in my head before I do them. And then, like, this just throws them off. This just throws it way off. So it's like, why well, don't you just kind of play around it? Okay, well, if they overbuff the item, then I literally can't play around it because I don't do any damage. I feel, anyways. Um, you know, you try and jump on somebody. You use your beads to avoid, um... To avoid the Guardian's Peel. And it doesn't matter because you're still being debuffed. I, I don't know. I don't want this item to be good ever. I didn't like it when it was its cheap form, which reduced the power by like 30. Um, I hate this even more. I know it's not great right now, but I don't want this to be good at all. I hate this item so much. Oh, like, and it's it's another thing. It's like it's like the Berserker shield and stuff, right? It's just like, wait, wait, wait. We we did this already. Jade Emperor's was really good once, and it was so annoying. Why are you trying to bring it back? Like, this was clearly something that was just plain annoying to play into. Um, it was it was either so annoying to play into, it made solo lane feel unplayable if you're a warrior. And then um, when it was bad, literally no one bought it because it was just terrible. So, I, uh, maybe just throw the concept out. Well, th this is them trying to rework the concept, right? But it's the same sort of idea. So, they're trying to make it more of a late game, mid to late game oriented thing because it's... Because it's percent based, right? But uh, dude, like the ideal of it is the problem, in my opinion, anyways. Uh, increased health on only hunters garb. Yeah, I don't know why it was at one hundred for so long. Um, it honestly doesn't feel bad every time I try it out. It's just like you know, other items just give more utility or give better base stats. So that's my thing with only hunters usually. But okay, I mean, it is it is a nice little boost. You know, it, it is it is a decent little item. It is also cheap. It's pretty cheap. All right. But there are, there's obviously the breastplate tree. So that hurts just a little bit. I, yeah, yeah, I know this is magical, but yeah. Um, in terms of utility, the breastplate tree in, ge in general gives you more, more options. Uh, water spell. Yeah. So remove the self root on Hebo while firing his three. That's absolutely massive. I think that's awesome. Um, I'm super excited to see how Hebo feels with this. Um, I mean, this is, this is just huge. Absolutely huge for this character because it was such a problem. Um, every time you rooted yourself with the three. Uh, sucks Agni can't get it. I know it, it would make Agni so strong if they did this, but um, maybe Agni can get the same ability. If we're just if we're just going wild with it, might as well give Agni the same uh, same treatment, you know. So, uh, yeah, I like that. Honestly, um, obviously, of course, Hebo's maybe Hebo's damage can come down a little bit now that they've, they've done this, you know. In terms of pure balance. But I think this just makes the character feel better to play as well. Right? So. I'm down. Um, then reduce the mana cost on uh, some Poseidon's abilities. Yeah. Yeah. It just feels like some some characters just don't run out of mana. Especially newer ones. Surprise, surprise. It just doesn't feel like they run out of mana. And then Poseidon just has um, these sort of outdated uh, mana costs. In my opinion. Um, should they bring them back? Hey, maybe. But, uh, you know. Then Baron Somdi, an interesting change. Decrease the self slow, and then increase the tick damage. The tick damage I can take. Um, the self slow being changed, though, I don't know about that because it gives him so much damage mitigation that he could just use this to run away. He was, I mean, there was all already situations like if you're close to your tower or something, you can just uh, ult and then start running into your tower while you're ulting. Uh, I guess sliding, <laughs> sliding into your tower. Um, so yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of that because I, oh, ah, I hate when you can't kill mages. It just it feels unfair. But anyways, so not the biggest fan of that. But you know I like Baron, so I could take that. At the end of the day, anyways. So Sir Ket, I don't know what they're doing with this, bro. So I'm not going to read out every single one because it's basically the same thing. So they're decreasing the base damage on absolutely everything, uh, and then increasing the scaling, and then um. 
this isn't based on max HP anymore, her passive. It's now based on your physical power. So yeah, it's supposed to be like physical power based, but it's like, okay. So tank circuit's really good, right? So what are we going to do? We're just going to make assassin uh, circuit overpowered, and then tank circuit's still going to be really, really good. Wait, well, what's the good thing about this? And then they add they add 35% damage mitigation on her ult. Like, that's a good thing. They're not reducing her cooldown. They're not reducing the ranges. They're not reducing the CC durations or anything like that. It It's the base damage. That's... Circuits are building... Circuits are literally building builds with zero power. And you think it's base damage. That's not it, dude. It's, it's the CC and her survivability. That's the issue, bro. Um, yeah, I mean, the damage was a little unfair as well, but... Like, dude, do you see what the builds are looking like right now? Like, she could, she can easily still... Like, with all these changes, she's going to be better, in my opinion, with these changes. Hey, if she's not, you can laugh at me, but I feel like she's going to be better after all these changes. I feel like this was, this is not... This is not it, bro. Um, Thor seeing some buffs, finally. Uh, very small, though. Just a little bit of extra lightning damage. Yeah, of course, that this adds up. Of course, this does add up. You could proc it, like, six or seven times before uh, before the duration ends. So, yeah. I mean, a little bit of extra damage on his ult is always nice, especially early, because, obviously, it increases at the same amount. Um, so, especially early game. Um, yeah, I can see that. Uh, so, that's nice. And then increase the, light, uh, the range of the lightning arcs. Don't really care for that. I mean... It's not bouncing to anyone. In in the use cases, I I usually use it. I mean, it's usually just for single targets and uh, for me because I feel like when I hit multiple people, I just get <laughs> I just have to like one out immediately. I can't combo anybody, so I try not to use it that way. Um, they increased the physical power scaling on this heart bomb. I feel like that's a little unnecessary. I feel like it it's it's strong enough as is. But all right, if they want to buff keep it, fair enough. Yeah, a little bit a little bit of extra damage on his only damaging ability other than his ultimate. Fair enough. Then buffing Jingwei again to 120% of Jingwei's physical power on explosive bolts, of course, this is at every single rank of this ability. So, I mean, that's really, really nice in my opinion. Uh, I, I think after all the Jingwei changes right now, she feels pretty solid to me. I, she's definitely not a OP character by any stretch of the imagination, but I really like how she feels right now, especially with the current builds. Um, I think she feels great. Um, yeah, the cooldowns are still a little high in her abilities, but I really like how she feels right now. That's just me. I mean, I liked her before all these buffs, so, yeah. Um, Chablanca decreased. Yeah, I don't know why they kept the cooldown so high on this for so long. So this is a little bit more fair. 16, scaling down to 14. Fair enough. Yeah, I like that. Frost Breath decreased the cooldown on his main source of CC. Oh, yeah, that's good. 16 down to 14 as you level it, and uh, typically you're going to be leveling this first, so nice. I think that's good. I think that's really good. And Zing Chen increased the protection buff on his three. I mean, I never, I never really, like, I never really saw the, uh, the benefit to this. I mean, I, I, yeah, it's it's a plus. This is definitely a plus, especially early game because it's it's a bonus ten early game. And then the increase in the duration, that's really nice too. So yeah, I mean, I, I think Zing Chen was already pretty decent. So, um, not necessarily. I don't necessarily. I'm not necessarily against buffing him. I said necessarily like 14 times. Sorry. Um, I'm not against buffing him, but um, yeah, this is a pretty strong buff, frankly. Um, I'm glad they're not buffing his damage, but yeah, that's that's gonna that's gonna feel tough. That's gonna feel tough to play into. Um, increase the base damage on Cthulhu's one. I'm mean, using Cthulhu, so like I don't want them to buff him at all. But all right, um, this will help him in the soul lane definitely, um, especially given that uh, it increases the damage early as well. So, hey, that's nice. That's a nice little buff for Cthulhu. Don't want to overbuff him, of course, because he is absolutely ridiculous. But yeah. Um, and Kakolin is the final change. They're actually buffing Kakolin, which I'm surprised about. I thought they were never going to buff him again because, uh, you know, it just feels like he flops in and out of the meta without any actual changes to him specifically. He usually just comes in when the uh, meta suits him. So, it's interesting that they're directly buffing him like this. I don't necessarily agree with that, but, I mean, I love Kakolin myself. So, I mean, I'm down with it. It's just, uh, you know, I think it, he, he can be such a problem when he's meta. Because it can feel like you can't do a thing against this character. It's been multiple multiple times, like a few times a season he comes around and it just feels like you can't really do anything against him in lane. Um, and I think the stars are sort of aligning for that to be the case again. Because a lot of the items are really solid for him right now. The the way that they're buffing a few of the hybrid items as well that Kakolin really likes. Um, 
I th I think right now he's pretty solid. So buffing him again is a little, a little interesting. Obviously not buffing him too too hard, but a buff at all is just like um, a little strange. But yeah. So that's this patch. Jeez, it was a it was a freaking long one, man. But uh, yeah, like I said in my bonus patch review, there's a lot of changes here, but I feel like not a lot is changing. Does that make sense? Um, you know, I'm worried to see what the Berserker Shield does. Does it just stay as a uh, soul lane staple where auto attack um, warriors are, are still going to be taking over entire lobbies and it's just going to be a, a big old problem and nothing is going to change with this because this does still seem pretty solid uh, while not being quite as damaging. It does feel, still seem quite good and it's just going to do the same sort of thing while not making you do quite as much damage. It's going to make you pretty tanky as well. Uh, in return, you know, the damage you would be doing is returned to you as defense, in my opinion, uh, with these changes. Um, but other than the Berserker Shield um, and the Hebo change, that's nice. Yeah, I'm just not seeing anything here that really screams to me, oh, that's a change. This is going to mix things up. And the meta is finally going to shift in this particular role. Like, nothing in here or the bonus patch really makes me feel that way. And I really, 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 really don't think this is going to do anything. If it does, I will... What will I do? Okay, if Sir Cat's not good as a tank anymore... Like, I'm not going to specifically say any particular role. But if she's not played as a hybrid anymore, as a hybrid or a full-on tank anymore... Um, I will... I don't know. I'll give away gems. How about that? If she doesn't get picked... Well, what's the SPL? Oh, shit. Okay, I don't actually know when the SPL is. But, uh, yeah... We'll just we'll try, we'll follow her her builds and stuff like that, and we'll see what people are doing. In my opinion, she will be just as good, if not better, as a hybrid slash tank after those changes. That's just my opinion. That's my view on it. So that's all. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the patch. Did you guys like the patch more than I did? I didn't really like this patch all that much. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching.